Logic Pro for iPad has changed a lot since its initial release. New AI-powered session players, new editing features, and powerful new plugins have all been added. What hasn't changed is the list of iPad models that Logic Pro is compatible with. With so many of Logic's features now either recommending or requiring an iPad with an M series chip, how do other iPad models hold up when using Logic's shiny new features? I have three non-M series chip equipped iPad models here, and in this video I'm going to see how usable they actually are for Logic Pro. Kicking us off is this 8th generation iPad. This is the base base model, it has 32GB of storage, 3GB of RAM, and is powered by the A12 Bionic chip. It costs $329-329 pounds at launch, though you'll be able to grab one of these for much less nowadays, secondhand or refurbished. Straight away, I would absolutely not recommend this particular base model for use with Logic Pro for iPad. Once you factor in how much storage just iPad OS gobbles up, it's taken up over 10 gigabytes at this point, you just won't have enough storage left to install all of Logic Pro for iPad's sound library, never mind room for projects or third party plugins. There is a 128 gigabyte storage configuration of this model available that gives you more free space to play with. But even then, well, let's see how it gets on. All right, I have a fresh new Logic project here and straight away, let's load up a session player. I'll pick the base session player to start with. By the way, I've added the CPU and memory monitor to the control bar on all three of these models so we can see how much pressure the device is under. Okay, as soon as the base session player loads up, the CPU and memory usage spikes. As of Logic Pro 2, both the base and drummer session players load up with Chromaglow enabled by default. Turning it off does actually seem to reduce CPU and memory pressure a little. Can I add an instance of Quantic Room Simulator to this track too? It loads up okay, but as soon as I try to switch QRS modes or access presets, I get a CPU overload message. Okay, let's add in another session player then, a drummer this time. Immediately, the iPad lets me know there is not enough free memory to complete the operation, though tapping OK does actually let me access the tracks and it even plays back. Like I said, the drummer session player loads up an instance of Chromaglow by default now, so maybe disabling it here will free up some of that memory pressure. Oh, OK. Can I reopen the project? I can. The project isn't loaded properly, yet the session drummer regions haven't loaded properly at all. Oh dear. Alright, we'll keep it simple then. Let's open one of Logic's demo projects and see how we go. The CPU and memory monitors are high straight away, but the track plays back okay. Until this part where I get a CPU overload message. Yeah, when it can't run more than one session player comfortably, or even run through the entirety of Logic Pro's demo project without throwing up a CPU error message, it's pretty clear that this iPad isn't suited for use with Logic Pro. I don't know if it should even be listed as supported anymore, to be honest. Next up is the fourth generation iPad Air. This model has 256 gigabytes of storage, four gigabytes of RAM, and is powered by the A14 Bionic chip. 
the 64 gigabyte model sold for $559 slash £579 at launch. And these ones are far more reasonably priced than that on the second hand market or refurbished market nowadays. This is still the model I recommend folks grab if they want to get into iOS music production with apps like GarageBand, for example, as it's still a really capable device. You'll still be cutting it close storage-wise with the base 64GB option though, but the 256GB model is more than enough for most people. But how does it handle logic? Loading up a base session player, the CPU and memory monitors do increase a bit here, but nowhere near as dramatically as the 8th gen iPad. Playback appears to be really smooth actually. What happens if I add an instance of Quantic Room Simulator though? That is dealt with that with no issues at all really. Okay, let's add another session player, this time a keyboard session player. I can dive in and edit the keyboard track in real time with no hitches or lag at all. That's brilliant actually. Okay, what about if I add a drummer track? No issues there either. Multiple instances of Chromaglow, Quantec Room Simulator on three session players, all of that is no sweat for this iPad Air. I can actually also record MIDI, add heavy duty effects to it, the iPad Air just takes it all in its stride. Great stuff. The iPad 8th gen wasn't able to play back one of Logic's demo projects. If I load it up and skip to the same part on this iPad, swing, swing. Well, the CPU monitor doesn't hit red and it doesn't choke or anything, but the project does start to lock up a bit. Having said that though, it does continue to play, until it reaches this part at the end of the project where the iPad can't cope, freezes and throws up a system overload message. So the iPad Air 4th gen did fare a lot better than the 8th generation iPad did across the board. It was able to handle multiple session player tracks with some of Logic's most taxing plugins applied with no real issues. Both of these models were released in 2020 by the way, which when you take into account the differences in their capabilities when it comes to running Logic, absolutely blows my mind really. No, you're not getting stem splitter with the iPad Air 4th gen, that feature does require an M1 chip or later or A17 Pro chip equipped iPad. But if you just plan on working on smaller projects or are just getting started with Logic Pro for iPad, this option could absolutely work for you. But as we saw with Logic's demo song, larger, more plug-in heavy projects will push this iPad to its limit. Finally, this is the iPad mini 6th generation. This model has 256 gigabytes of storage, 4 gigabytes of RAM and is powered by the A15 Bionic chip. The base 64 gigabyte storage model sold for $499 slash £499 at release. When Logic Pro for iPad first released, I did a performance review with four different iPad models, including this one. And this is the model that surprised me the most, as it ended up running Logic really well. Let's see if that's still the case. Quick note here, this particular iPad mini has a screen issue where this big red line appears periodically. It doesn't seem to affect screen recording, but if you do notice it, that's what it is. Loading up the first session player track and the iPad mini seems to handle things maybe a little better than the iPad Air 4th gen. It looks like I can add an instance of QRS here without any problems either.
So far, so smooth. If I add a drummer session player, there are no problems either, and it looks like I can fiddle with Chroma Glow here without really affecting the CPU monitor at all. I can add another instance of Quantic Room Simulator here too. What about a third session player? I'll add a keyboard track now, and the CPU monitor hasn't even really touched halfway yet. What about if I add instances of Chroma Glow and QRS to this keyboard session player track? Nope, no problem at all. What about another keyboard session player? Nice, that all went quite smoothly. Confusingly, to me anyway, this iPad model is able to use the stem splitter feature that arrived with Logic Pro for iPad version 2. Technically, the A15 Bionic chip did release after the M1 chip, so it does kind of make sense. And yeah, performing stem splitter on this file inside Logic on the iPad Mini 6th gen works exactly as it should, with zero issues. What about the demo project that locked up both previous iPad models? The iPad Mini deals with the section that locked up the iPad 8th gen in the same way as the iPad Air. It plays it back, but it is a bit stuttery. In the outro, it unfortunately does throw up a CPU overload message just as the iPad Air did. Whether or not you'd want to actually use Logic Pro on a device with such limited screen size, the iPad Mini 6th Gen performed identically pretty much to the iPad Air 4th Gen. It's able to deal with some of Logic's more taxing features really well in smaller scale projects, but struggles with larger effect heavy situations. So can you use Logic Pro with non-M series iPads? Well, you can, but should you? This one, the 8th generation iPad, no, maybe stick to GarageBand or other iOS DAWs if you have this model or similar. You're just not going to have a good experience in Logic with this. These two are a little bit more complicated. Yes, you absolutely can create small to medium sized projects with multiple AI powered session players and heavy duty effects with little to no issues. But if you want to make bigger pro level compositions and really want to push logic and get as much out of it as you possibly can, then no, I don't think so. As we saw in Logic's demo project, both of these models struggled to get through that song in its entirety without maxing out its CPU. Let me know what iPad model you use to make music in Logic Pro for iPad down in the comments. And if you found this video interesting or helpful, then give that like button a wee tickle on your way past. I really appreciate it and it helps more people see this video. And if you want to see how another non-M series iPad fares when using Logic Pro for iPad, watch this next.